question. May 15th would have been the day to start and um, lacing up, getting on the court in front of those fans. Um, but now that the season's postponed, when you got that news, what was going through your head? I mean, I expected it, so I was ready yeah. for it. <laughs> but, um, I mean, just to stay positive, you know, just to stay ready, stay positive. Um, if season's not going on right now, okay, what can I do to stay ready? And just to keep moving forward and keep a good, optimistic attitude. There's a lot of talk right now that, you know, you guys possibly won't get to play in front of fans. You might have one site locations, multiple site locations. Uh, what are your personal concerns of just competing in front of possibly no energy or um, in front of no fans to kind of get you guys going? Um, what are your thoughts and concerns on that? At this point, I just want to play. And I think every athlete feels like that. Like, yeah. I just want to play. I don't care if no one is there. Like, oh, it does not matter. Um, when I was in Turkey, I only played one game. And that game, there was no fans. And at first, it was kind of like, you know, it was weird. But it just felt like a scrimmage. Like, it felt like a pickup. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I didn't notice it. When I was in the game, like, I'm in the zone. Like, I didn't even really notice it. And we won that game. I just want to throw okay. that out there. Okay. But, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I didn't even – I didn't re personally, I didn't really notice it. I was just locked in. I wanted to do well. And that's all I was really focused on. And the draft still went on as planned. But, you know, it was a virtual draft, the first time it's been done in that way. Um, you were just in these athletes' shoes in 2018, um, two years in the league now. Yeah. Uh, what was your takeaway from the uh, virtual draft? I, I felt bad. Yeah. You know, I felt bad because I remember how special that moment was for me. And so mm -hmm. it also made me thankful not to take that moment mm -hmm. that I had for granted. But um, I'm glad that the girls got some type of recognition on television. I thought that was nice. And the fact that the WNBA tried and they did a really good job. Um, mm -hmm. I think that was really cool. They just announced today that the virtual draft was um, – the most watched draft in the past 16 years um, and the second most watched on ESPN. I mean, this was the first sporting event really to get everyone together during this time. And then we had the MJ doc, but <laughs> what's your message to those to just support the W? I mean, of course, like we just talk about cherishing things. We don't have sports anymore, like moving forward, just um, really getting behind women's basketball my message for people is just to see the value in it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't compare us to NBA. You can't compare our league mm -hmm. to the NBA. It's different. You know, and we have their support. We're gaining their support, their recognition. So it's like, if we could just have somewhat of equal support or just respect, mm -hmm. I think respect, if they could, if fans would just equally, equally respect us, mm -hmm. I think that will just continue to skyrocket our game. Um, yeah, like I said, you can't compare us to the men, you know, it's, it's not the same. So mm -hmm. just allowing people to continue to see what we're doing and to con continue to see us as people off the court too. I feel like that helps just getting some type of emotional attachment right. to us as players, I think yeah. is big. Right. And the draft was really successful for you all. I mean, number four pick with Kennedy Carter, a bucket from Texas A&M. Um, plus three other exciting rookies. First, have you had a chance to talk to any of them? Yeah, so ironically, I was on a live with Michaela Pivik okay. earlier, the day, earlier in the day, and she played mm -hmm. at Oregon State, so I had played against her for a couple of years. And when we were talking, obviously, I had no idea that she was going <laughs> to come to Atlanta. So, um, yeah, after the draft, I was, like, so stoked because she's already, like, a little sis to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. What's the excitement with all those new pieces coming for the rookies? I mean, I'm just ready to get to work with everybody. We have a mm -hmm. lot of new pieces, even with free agency. We have so many new players. So um, I'm just really excited because last season it stunk and it's it's not good. It's not – I don't know. I don't like sitting in the, in the funk and just being yeah. in that. So I know everybody is ready to get back to work and just um, ready to clean things up. So speaking of the, that offseason um, trading and everything, I mean, for the vets, you guys lost Angel Bacatri, which I know was your OG. Yes. And then Brittany Sykes, um, she went off to the Sparks. Two mm -hmm. big pieces leaving, but I mean, Glory Johnson coming. Um, Courtney Williams of the Suns, like, 
what is really the potential that you see within these teams? I mean, I just listed a couple of people, but this could be a dangerous team going forward. I think it will be. And I think it's just going to take hard work. Like we're just going to have to buy in. Um, We have a really great coaching staff who does a lot for us and supports us in so many ways. So just buying into what they have for us. um, And I'm expecting, I don't really know what to expect, but I know that there's going to be a lot of changes and just a lot of newness just because the way that season was last year. So there's going to be a lot to um, clean up, but it's, it's about us buying into that system and, doing the best that we can to execute it. You mentioned that coaching staff. I mean, 2018, when you were drafted, it was the same year that Nikki Collin was um, named coach of the year. How has she really just molded you as a player and um, just help you professionally grow and personally grow? Coach Nikki's tough on me. And I know it's because she believes in me. And so mm-hmm. just having a coach that believes in me is huge. And um, that's all I could ever ask for, because I'm going to work my ass off and I'm going to do the Mm -hmm. best that I can. So just knowing that she knows that and that she's going to challenge me and just push me to be the best that I can be, that helps me to grow as a player. And I think we have a really good relationship, a good relationship with communication. Um, She's honest with me and any type of feedback or any critique that she has, I always try to adjust Mm -hmm. and always try to um, change. Yeah, for the I think she did an amazing job in this offseason, really just putting together this 2020 team. Um, even though that 2019 season was tough, uh, yeah. what was your personal takeaway from that season in order for you guys to bounce back? Like, what is kind of the team conversation right now? We have to do more. And I look at myself first when I say that, like, maybe I could have gotten the gym more. Maybe I could have been more focused. And so just mm-hmm. really – being cognizant of I can do more even when I'm tired I'm not feeling it but it's like I don't know when so for now for instance um looking back at season I'm thinking about different moments where like oh I could have done more I could have gotten in the gym more I could have been a better teammate here it's like I don't want to feel that way Mm -hmm. in a year you know so it's like why not just do it now so just really laying the groundwork and putting in the work so that I don't have to feel that way come postseason right is there anything that you're looking to add to your game to bring into this always okay okay (laughs) what are you working with what parts of your game do you see you need to like enhance or elevate everything I mean I just I want to become better you know it doesn't stop so like um ball handling shooting the three um being so efficient just in every single every way possible Mm -hmm. Um, if you were to tell rookie Mo anything coming into this league, what would you tell her? Big picture. I would tell rookie Mo to look at the big picture. And um, it's not always just, I, you know, we tend to just look at what's right in front of us. It's not always just about that. Mm-hmm. So just to look at the big picture, you never know who's watching you. You know, um, everything happens for a reason. Mm-hmm. And so to really be um, diligent in your journey and your process. And I think I did a decent mm-hmm. job with that. But there's moments where like, you know, you should focus. But like I would tell rookie Mo just to have tunnel vision and to look straight ahead. So, okay, telling yourself that when you were in that moment, like how do you get from here to here? Well, how did you overcome that to get to that step? Really mentality. just investing, really investing mm-hmm. in myself and um, knowing where I want to go, knowing the steps and the direction that I want to take, and then being focused on that. And then it's also about the team around you, like the people around you, people who believe in you, mm-hmm. who, when you are feeling down, because you, you know, you're human, you know, you're yeah. not always going to have, you're not always going to be on the up. So having people around you to pick you up and just to give you um, that fuel that you need for your fire and to remind you like, hey, this is your purpose. This is what you're doing. Just keeping great people around you to keep you grounded. Um, that is so helpful and so essential for me in my process. I know Angel McCautry, she is your OG, but who are those people around you that are picking you up and also those mentors that you're going to, to kind of uh, be a sponge? I mean, honestly, I feel like when you're a good person, you attract good people. So it could be like the most randomest people. So like Cam, who had um, 
messaged earlier in this mm -hmm. in this live i don't know if she's mm -hmm. still here but her and her boyfriend they're um, like my videography team they're people who they see my vision they see what i want to do and they help me to achieve that my trainers mm -hmm. um my agent my marketing agent my managers like i don't know i'm just very selective with who i let into my circle and so um mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. everyone who i let in <laughs> They see what I want to do. They know my process. They know what I've gone through. And it's like, if I eat, they eat. You know, that's the mentality. Like, I just want everyone to eat. I love it. I love it. What's the best advice that you've gotten from anyone um, going through these two years? Um, best advice? That's a really good question. So Angel, well, just since we're speaking of Angel, Angel mm -hmm. had um, given me a book to read, and it's called The Subtle Art of Not Giving an F. I don't know if you've read that. I've it's seen a great it. book. I haven't, but I need yeah, to. Yeah, it's a great book. <laughs> and in that book, there's a lot of good takeaways, but I, I would say the biggest takeaway for me was um, in life, it's not always about just making it to the top, but it's about the journey on the way up. It's about the view on the way up. And so, mm -hmm. again, with staying present, it's about being present, being in the moment and going through all of that, all the trials, just everything that you're going through and, you know, really taking it all in. Because when you get to the top, it's not just about that view. It's about the view that you had when you were climbing to get to the top. Mm, okay. I'm like taking notes myself, honestly. I need this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, overall, I would say like, what's just the best moment or um, the ma best matchup that you were looking forward to? Like, what are those type of things you're looking like whenever you came into this league, um, you were just looking forward to, you came across that moment, any type of matchup that you had? Man, I mean, I wish I was hungrier, I guess you could say. I was hungry, but mm -hmm. I wish I was just not as nervous. I was nervous. So, like, my mm -hmm. second game in the W, I won against Maya Moore. And, <laughs> yes, that was my face. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, we won Girl. the game. We ended up winning. And I played some uh -huh. solid moments. But like when I got in the game, my coach was like, welcome to the league, Mo. Right. And so I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm going to <laughs> more. You know, I'm shook. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I did a decent job. But like now I'm like, I don't care who's in front of me. Like okay. I'm locking you up. I'm giving you buckets. Mm -hmm. I'm just focused on, you know, doing the best that I can. And when you mm -hmm. focus on doing the best that you can, I mean, there is no competition. Only competition is yourself. 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, what are those battles like whenever um, you're going up against people that are coming into this league, you're trying to make sure you're staying on those skins. They're like, hey, like, I'm going up against Monique Billings. How do you stay on top of your game and make mm -hmm. sure that, you know, you're still keeping it up to par um, for whoever's coming into the league? Really just putting in the work, not getting complacent mm -hmm. and um, just focusing on what I can do to get better and also I want to be a good teammate. You know, I had great mm -hmm. teammates. When I came into the league, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if my teammates were, I didn't know if it was going to be like love and basketball. Like you remember <laughs> how her teammate treated her. I didn't know if it was going to be mm -hmm. like that, but I was ready for it. And my vets were amazing. My vets took such good care of me and took me under their wing. And like, I was a sponge. I wanted to learn from them because they're at the place where I want to get to. They're seven right. years, 10 years in the league. And I'm like, wow, that's what that looks like. Teach me. Mm -hmm. So I also want to be able to be that for my teammates and um, yeah, just to challenge them for them to challenge me and keep me on my toes. So, yeah. And I know a lot of the growth within you uh, professionally and personally was playing overseas too. You played in South Korea, you played in Turkey. Um, what was that experience like for you? Um, overseas has its ups and downs. Overall, mm -hmm. I like playing overseas. You know, it's um, it's a great experience. It's tough, though. It's a sacrifice. You know, you miss your family, um, different things. You feel like you're missing out on everything. Like, people have mm -hmm. birthday parties and celebrations, and you're just like, oh, my gosh, I'm missing out on everything. But, like, yeah. it's a sacrifice. It's temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just talking to my agent the other day. Like, it's all temporary. I don't know how long I'm going to be playing basketball, but it's like, take advantage of it while you can. So, mm -hmm. um yeah, you just got to put your head down and focus. That's the mentality when you go overseas. How do you adapt to those cultural differences? I know that has to be a huge uh, hurdle to get over. Definitely different, but I I don't know. I love it. So, like, I love 
being immersed in different cultures. So Mm -hmm. trying new foods and going exploring, going to different places, meeting new people. I thrive off of that. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that in itself kind of helps me on the court because it's like it's not just basketball. You know, I'm able to see the world and do so many different things. I make vlogs about that, too. So, Mm -hmm. yes. Go check it out. Go to her page. Um, How has playing overseas, I guess, really just challenged you as a person but not only that developed you as a person a lot of mental so like Mm -hmm. if I'm overseas right now it's daytime here but overseas it's 2 a.m and obviously Mm -hmm. I can't stay up all night because I have a game or I have practice Mm -hmm. so um just learning how to be with myself I guess I guess that was like pre-quarantine um you know just because it's kind of the same thing but um yeah I don't know just learning how to focus write down my goals and just focus Mm -hmm. on um what I want to do what I want to achieve and not be distracted getting rid of distractions is huge especially when you're overseas there could be so many distractions but you have to constantly remind yourself what's my purpose why am I here um I'm here for this duration of time I'm gonna get it in I'm locked Mm -hmm. in you have your ups and downs but um Mm -hmm. if you just keep that mindset you thrive what is your purpose Ooh, she asking the good question. <laughs> My purpose is to be what I didn't have when I was in high school, when I was growing up, when I was a young girl. I wish I had a mentor. I had people I could look up to, but I wish I had someone who I can actually talk to, someone that was actually real, you know, not just right. on the TV screen, but someone right. who I can relate to and say, man, that's how I want to be. How did you get here? And so I feel like my purpose in life is to be that example and to be that light and to give back and Mm -hmm. um yeah that's how I try 